Welcome back to Panda Pen Club, Fountain Pen Channel, where we hunt down and sniff out the most interesting, fabulous, and accessible fountain pens on the planet. Today, I'd like to try something a little different. I want to show you the daily writers I'm going to be using this week and the different stationery I'm going to be using and how I'm planning the week ahead. It's Monday morning, after all. I don't know what your Mondays look like. Monday, for me, is usually the busiest work day of the week. But that's kind of a good thing because that's where I sort of set the tone for the week ahead and plan things out. And if Monday's busy, that's a good sign. The rest of the week is probably going to unfurl. Every day recently, I've been finding squeezing a lemon into a pint glass of water seems to be a fantastic way of perking myself up. I don't know why. Apparently it's something to do with alkalizing, but since a lemon is acid, I've never quite understood that rationale. Anyway, rituals are good, whether they're absolute nonsense or not. They help to tether us to this ungainly planet of ours and keep me, at least, somewhat sane. Other things that keep me sane are trying to overlay a little organization to my natural instincts and impose a bit of order. Do what I'm supposed to do. That's what it's all about. Making sure that I'm behaving myself. The way I usually use pens is determined by what I do on the Monday. Which pens I pick and put on my desk, sort of over here somewhere, behind the glass of water, or here in this baker-like cup that I bought on eBay recently. But the pens that I'm going to use for the week get put on my desk at the beginning of the week. And I guess because they're close to hand. And having that sort of conscious rotation through the pens you're using is a good way of making sure you remember how much you love each and every one of them and why. Because, well, it's like having... Um, 20,000 little children running around. It's very difficult to keep track of their various personalities, deformities, requirements, and um, petulances. And I like to keep on top of these things. So this week, I would appear to be using mainly a Sailor Relo and a rather large and hefty Duke Confucius. The numbers are 551. Duke 551 Confucius and a Sailor Relo. Now the stories behind these two pens are very different. This is a recently acquired pen. This is a pen I've had for quite some years now and it was one of the first costly pens I got in that first flush of excitement I had when I was rediscovering the hobby of fountain pens in the first place. And I was hugely obsessed with Sailor almost straight away. I think I pranced from Lamy pretty much head first into Sailor and all the gorgeous life enhancing things they do. This one is just a gorgeous writer. It has that lovely pencil like resistance you get with Sailor fountain pens. It has this excellent tank of ink. It's, a, it's a, a piston filler. The total lack of worry you get with a pen like this in terms of running out, in terms of spillage. Carry this around, you know, grab it on your way out or, or use it to keep notes. Wouldn't, probably wouldn't take it to the, the supermarket to, to update a shopping list or something like that. But in terms of a immediate to-do, it's very useful to have at hand to keep track of desk-based things. This is a little gadget. It is a gadget, I suppose, in my low-tech universe that I found really quite powerful, if that's not a silly word. I, I got this from, uh, from Scriptum Fine Stationery in Oxford which sells its products online as well. And it's a truly tremendous shop. I've known Azim, the, um, the owner of Scriptum, for a long time, since I was in university. And he's a very, very dear and special friend. And luckily, the stuff he sells is wholly worthy of anyone's endorsement as well. So, yeah, check it out, Scriptum. This, this little... Uh, 
this little, you know, when I first got this through the post uh, as a gift from Azim, I, I didn't actually know what the damn thing was for. I got had this and this, and I eventually, amongst some other things, and I eventually connected the two together, this being a pad of paper that says Florentia. Florentia. It's a lovely, smooth paper, you know, a pleasure to write on. It's it's just a normal sort of tear-off pad, but it comes with this, I eventually realized, this leather, um, a little bit like a passport holder, I suppose. It has these four corners, like this, and you take your little notes, and you put them in to, into the little display card, and it seems like such a small thing, doesn't it? But because you can prop this on your desk in front of you, I'm always losing to-do lists. Always, or I was. Always losing them and, and absolutely forgetting to do the things that were on them. Or I'd fill books with to-do lists containing the same items because trying to, trying to keep track of all the miscellany of my life is, is tricky sometimes. So, you know, when you have things like... of almost equal importance, like email, lawyer, TV wire, you know, these are things, these are urgent matters in my existence that really need to be taken care of. They can be put on my little Florentia card, and because they're in this leather holder, which is from Scripton, but by somebody called Byron and Brown, a pair, a pair of folks perhaps called Byron and Brown, it's got this permanence to it, and you can even keep use it as a little filing system for previous thoughts, remarks, and urgent things that you're keeping track of and yeah I find that it's the simple things in life that can be the most fulfilling and also the most ruddy useful you know I've spent ridiculous amounts of money on software and apps to try and keep track of all the flurrying flurrying dandelion petals that are continuously exploding through my brain. And yet this little thing, thank you again Azim, has just, maybe you're a bit more organized than me, but I find it damn useful. So that's my little Florentia pad. And I couple that with a, a weekly planner device. And again, the usefulness of this, again, it's a tear off thing. And these can be had at Scripton too. I don't mean this to sound like an advert for Scripton, I just I found it really useful. And that's that. But yes, a weekly planner with the days and flowers because, well, and a little butterfly and some little birds. It really is actually gorgeous. I don't know what language this is in. I believe my guess is it's, it's Czech. Well, maybe someone will correct me. So I'm about to fill this in with either the Sailor Relo or the Duke 551 Confucius. This is a pen I got much more recently. I got because I find Duke pens really, really reliable and somewhat underrated. There's not enough of them around. Well, no, there are plenty of them around, but, but people, people don't seem to talk about them quite so much. And I find them really consistent, really well made. The price point is, you know, the same as a pen BBS or something. And they're great fun. This is a big, chunky, hefty pen, which I've filled with um, diamine ancient copper. And it's got a lovely big nib and, and just lays down tons of ink. So it's really good to combine these two. You know, careful little script with this and, and blousy emphasis with this, this creature. So that's the weekly planning. It's Monday morning. I've already had three meetings this morning, and as usual, the notes are already the CD. The Biffy Clyro. Have you heard of that? I found it in a gorgeous little shop yesterday, and it's for my mother. So that's going on the list. Go to post office, send letter to mum. In fact, it's already there. You see, it works. The notes from this morning's meetings are are circulated around on a piece of Clairefontaine notepaper. This the page in this Clairefontaine A4, 
book. I find Claire Fontaine really reasonably priced. And this little noble note book, which I found in a shop called Anthropology, which was having a massive sale. And I, it always looked very expensive to me, so I never went in there before. And, but I, I assumed it was an independent retailer or something. But apparently it's a global heaving conglomerate. But anyway, this is a lovely um, Japanese notebook, squared paper, lovely to write on, really lovely. £16 was the original price. I think, luckily, I, I cost, it was about a quarter of this in their emergency stock sell-off that I happened to come upon. So, those are my tools for the week ahead. Am I going to use them successfully <laughs> to impose a bit of order? Well, it worked last week. So, hopefully, this week will be the same. you just got to keep going. Let me know in the comments how you like to start your week and pens you're going to be using. I would really like to know. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to Panda Pen Club on YouTube.